coming up this week on the center of it all. Winter is in full force all around us. We give you a few tips on how you can stay safe in the snow and ice. And with the new year come new resolutions, like getting to the gym. We check out some ways to get the most out of your fitness routine. Mel cooks up a perfect breakfast that is sure to keep you warm, and our craft this week has a bit of a frosty feel. Sit down, get comfortable, it's all coming up next, right here on the center of it all. Welcome to this brisk January and the center of it all. The temperature has dropped recently and now snow and ice have become part of our normal weather. We get a few tips on how you can stay safe during this icy season. Snow and ice can really be a pain, literally. According to Dr. Tom Waters, an emergency department physician at Cleveland Clinic, some of the most common injuries that doctors see in the emergency room during winter months are fractures from falls on ice and snow. You just gotta be very careful. Um, you know, everyone always thinks it's not gonna happen to them and they're gonna be fine. But you know, when you get out there, if it's icy, you just gotta be really, really careful. Make sure you're wearing the right um, you know, footwear for the conditions and um, just take it easy. Icy sidewalks, slippery driveways, and boots that bring water onto the floors are all potential sources of winter-related falls. Dr. Waters says that most common injuries from slips and falls include wrist, forearm, and hip fractures. Head injuries are common too, especially if a fall occurs on cement. The best ways to prevent falls is to make sure that walking paths to and from your home are clear, shoveled, and de-iced. It is also important to discourage people from walking through your home with wet shoes or boots. Entryway rugs should be non-slip or secured to the floor to avoid slip hazards. And removing obstacles such as shoes and clutter can help folks avoid tripping and falling as well. Dr. Waters says that the elderly are the most susceptible to injuries from falls because their bones are typically weaker and more likely to break from a fall, even if it's only from standing height. Number one, their gait may not be as steady and also they suffer from you know, osteopenia or um, you know, brittle bones. Uh, when they fall, what a younger person may fall and not break a bone, but an older person is more susceptible to fracturing something when they fall. Experts say if an elderly person has fallen in the past year, they may have a balance problem and should tell a doctor. Treatment can include physical therapy sessions to improve confidence, as well as strength, endurance, and balance. We will have more tips on how you can stay safe during this winter season in the next coming weeks. When we come back, we swap out our snow boots for some sneakers and head into the gym. Welcome back. Trying to get in shape can be difficult for some. We spoke to a professional and got some tips on how you can stay motivated and determined all year long. With a new year, many of us have a goal in mind, shedding some pounds. But according to Erica Steptoe, a health coach at Cleveland Clinic, when we focus too hard on losing weight, it can be really easy to lose sight of what our body is really doing on the journey towards fitness. You're changing your, your habits of fitness. You have to remember that your body is trying to adjust to that. So it can actually retain a lot of water at the beginning at some points, and then it dies off, and then it will actually show what's really happening. says that oftentimes people have a specific weight number in mind and when they don't see that number right away they get frustrated. She also says it's common to start a workout plan only to discover early on that you've actually gained a few pounds. This can happen due to an increase in muscle mass which takes up less space but still weighs as much as fat and can make the scale not accurately reflect the hard work you're putting in. Stepto recommends that people measure themselves instead. Measure around the waist, the middle of the thigh, and the arms to better identify where you are losing fat instead of just focusing on the number on the scale. Stepto says the most important thing to remember is that results take time and patience is everything. She says that it's important to stay calm as anxious energy can make us hold onto unwanted weight.
you want to make sure that you are as relaxed as possible through your journey and just really being assured that if you're putting the right time and dedication and consistency into this journey, it will show up. It may take a couple weeks, couple of months for some people, all depending on your own metabolism when you first started off. Steptoe says that no matter how little, any increase in movement is beneficial to our overall health, even if the number on the scale doesn't move much at all. When we come back, Mel is cooking an omelet with a little twist. Welcome back to the center of it all, eggs and steak for breakfast. Mel has the perfect omelet recipe. This time of year, more than a few of you are looking to cut carbs, increase protein, and add a lot of veggies to your diet. I know because I'm getting a lot of requests for recipes across my desk. When I'm in that mindset, and sometimes even when I'm not, I reach for my omelet pan. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an American omelet stuffed with steak, peppers, cheddar, and topped with a bold flavored fresh chimichurri sauce. Let's get started. Chimichurri sauce made its way onto our Tex-Mex or Southwestern tables via Central America, via South America. Back in the 16th century, Spain sent boatloads of cattle to Argentina where it quickly became the country's main source of protein. The cowboys, or gauchos, who herded the cattle invented this green sauce made from herbs native to their region for their cowboy cooked steaks. I'm going to start to make my chimichurri sauce by putting six big cloves of garlic in a cup of red onion in the work bowl of my food processor. And I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to process this 15 or 20 times. So it's all minced. Just quickly scrape down the sides of the processor bowl. Now what I'm adding is two cups of cilantro leaves and a cup and a half of fresh parsley leaves. And you can add any proportions of these, and some people make it with all parsley. Some people add fresh oregano. I'm going to add some dried oregano, because that's the way my family likes it. And now I'm going to put this back in the processor and pulse again. Everything. Carefully remove the blade from the work bowl. And with the spatula, I'm going to transfer all of this mixture into a small, medium sized mixing bowl. Now, the reason I'm doing this instead of processing it again in the food processor when I add all this stuff is this is the way it's authentic to Argentina, the way they are mixing this together, take it out of the processor and then add these liquid ingredients to it. I'm adding three quarters of a teaspoon of dried oregano, white pepper, black pepper, salt, sugar, tablespoon of lime juice, quarter cup red wine vinegar. I'm just gonna mix this all together. That lime juice really makes it pop. And a half cup of olive oil, last. Give it a real good mix. And you can taste it right now, but I don't recommend uh, adjusting any of the seasonings because this needs to be covered and go in the refrigerator for at least a half an hour and up to two or three hours to give all of the flavors time to marry and at that point you can taste it and adjust it for salt or sugar. Whenever I'm making a hearty stuffed omelet, I'm making an American omelet which is a little bit different than making its thinner, more delicate French omelet cousin. 
And that means that unless you really want raw vegetables in your omelet, and some people do, you have to saute them first. And I put about a tablespoon of butter in this little pan, and I'm adding a quarter cup of red onion. I'm using red onion because that's what we put in our chimichurri sauce. And about three or four tablespoons of red and bell pepper. And I'm just going to let these saute for a minute or two, put them on the back of the stove, and make my omelet. These have been on the stove about a minute and a half. They're bright colored and crunch tender. I'm just going to put this to the back and mix up an omelet. In the same pan, I'm melting a tablespoon of butter and I'm swirling it around to coat the bottom and the sides nice and light, not too much butter, back on the hot surface of the stove. In this little cup, I've got three eggs whisked with three tablespoons of cream, which is basically one tablespoon of cream per egg, and some freshly ground sea salt and peppercorn blend. I'm going to pour this into my pan. And unlike a French omelet, which is done fast and kind of furious, that cooks in less than a minute, a stuffed omelet is slower and lower. Take a little bit of patience. It still doesn't take very long, less than five minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, swirl, back to the heat, swirl. Now, what you're going to notice while I'm doing this is how the side of the eggs are starting to stick to the side of the pan. This is what you're looking for. Now we're actually looking like the sides and the bottom are starting to set up. And I'm not going to lie to you, you're going to regulate your heat up and down because underneath this omelet it's important to go up and down. I'm so showing you the technique. Now we're getting to the point where you can see it's, already, it's setting around the sides. And once you can start peeling back the sides of the omelet, this is where it's important to pick up the pan and allow, go all the way around the sides, keep tilting, and allow all of the liquid juices to flow underneath your eggs all the way around. You want to get as much of that liquid, keep going down and through, swirling away. Okay, now I'm going to put, and you can see this is still moist on the top. This is exactly what you're looking for. It's moist, but this is going to change as it cooks. I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit, and I'm going to keep an eye on the bottom because we, at this point, no, we don't have browning and we don't want browning. What we're looking to do is just wait for these top eggs to get a little creamy. Don't be afraid to push them around a little bit. This is all going to be cooked through to the center when it comes time to eat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the heat a little bit more. I'm going to add my cheese to half of this, and I'm adding a third of a cup of cheddar, and I'm using habanero cheddar. It's really spicy, really hot. So that's going on half. I'm going to put veggies next, and veggies next is important because when the cheese melts, this is what's going to hold all the vegetables in place. The veggies are still warm, so they're going to help melt, help, help melt that cheese a little bit. Now we're just going to wait just another minute or so. We're going to look at the bottom. See how nice and golden that's getting underneath there? And I've got about a half a cup of thinly sliced flank steak, which I cooked earlier. It's still slightly warm. And all I did was put this under the broiler 10 minutes per side and let it rest. We're going to top that second half with a nice, goodly amount of steak. Now I'm going to turn my heat off. With the aid of a nice, I'm going to try to do this for the camera here, Andrew. Eight of a nice big wide spatula. I'm just going to lift this side, the unfilled side, over the filled side. Now I'm going to take this over, put it on a plate, and it's time to eat. Whether you serve it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, this omelet stuffed with steak, veggies, and cheese, topped with bold garlic and chimichurri sauce, and lettuce and tomato to the side is a lot better than just a steak on a plate.
For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Simple, delicious, and perfect for a wintry morning indoors. When we come back, we start crafting and introduce you to our pet of the show. Welcome back to the center of it all. Christmas may be over, but I still have my Christmas tree up. And for our craft this week, we're going to do something kind of wintry. So let's get started. So this craft is really easy, really simple. It's all things that you have already bought for previous crafts that we covered. So we have the salt, the mason jar, the Mod Podge, um, some tape and scissors, and that's it. So first what you're going to do is you're going to just take your mason jar. You're going to leave the lid on this time for this craft and you're going to get your tape and you're just gonna this is gonna be your design this is what you're gonna put around where you don't want the salt to go actually I want it a little bit skinnier so I'm gonna cut that piece in half okay so then you kind of have just a little strand like this now you're going to put it around the jar So let's put one there, and then I'm gonna get a second piece. Make sure it's long enough this time. I'm gonna cut it again, but not in half. I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna put that, maybe just right underneath. So well, now what you're gonna do, I just laid a paper towel down so that the glue doesn't get everywhere. You're gonna take your jar, you can use a paintbrush, um, you can use your fingers, kind of whatever works best for you. A paintbrush is obviously gonna be a little more um, a little less messy, but I'm just going to use my finger and you're just going to kind of put this all over the jar, even over the tape and everything. Just kind of smooth it out, make it as even as you can. And you don't need a whole lot, actually. A little bit of this stuff will go a long way. Okay, make sure it's covered up around the lid, too. Now you can see it's just kind of looks a little cloudy has a little winter look to it so now that that's all glued I just took some of the salt and just got a clear container and put it in so it's easier to kind of put the salt on and a little less messy all I'm gonna do is set the jar in and just kind of roll it around it's gonna kind of give it a little a little snowy look do is you're going to take off the tape while it's still wet. Okay, so there's the first one. You can go through and kind of some of the glue may have gotten underneath. So you can just kind of go through and clean it up a little bit if you have to. Now we're gonna do this one. Okay, and then you're just gonna let it dry. When it dries, you can spray it with some clear 
um, spray paint the, the stain setter. So you can see a little bit, it's frosty all over. Now you're just gonna let this dry. It's gonna take a couple hours. Okay, so we took the lid off. Um, I have a candle in here. You can do a tea light. You can do um, pretty much any kind that you want. And then you're gonna trim the wick and then you're just gonna light it. You can see it's just kind of a little frosty and just kind of fun for winter. So that's how you take a mason jar and without a holiday theme, just still kind of have that nice winter feel in your home. Let's head over to Nittany Beagle Rescue to see who they have for our pet of the show. Thanks Alicia. I'm here from Nittany Beagle Rescue with Sweetie. She's uh, one that we got recently. She's eight years old. She's good with kids. She's good with people. She lived with a cat before, so she's good with cats. She's a little bit selective of other dogs, so you need to introduce her a little sort of slowly. She's house trained, she's crate trained, um, she likes walks. The scar, she recently had some surgery, but she's fine now, and that'll, all that fur will grow back and the scars will heal and everything. She fits her name very well. She really likes to cuddle up with you. So if we could find someone to give her a permanent home, that would be fantastic. That wraps up this week's Center of It All. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay warm, and I'll see you next time.